Hey, good morning guys. In the science news category, I'm going to talk to you today about a knoll lizard. These are lizards. We've got lots of different lizards here. Do you like lizards? I've got lizards. i got a chameleon. Lizards have ability to grab things with their toes, and some of them have different tactics for this. The anole lizard actually uses little hairs on the bottom of its toes that help it grab hold of trees and things, and that helps it to climb. But in case of a hurricane, that's going to really help it to grab hold of the branches so that it doesn't fly away in the wind. A recent study just came out that was identifying size of the toe pads on the lizard, how big the toe pads were, really correlated with the hurricane frequency, how often a hurricane happened in that area. So I want you to take a look at this chart here. They made a map of the region they were studying, and for every place that had a lizard, they put a dot. Every time that dot was a lizard that had a big toe pad, it would make a large dot. If it was a lizard that had a small toe pad, it would make a small dot, okay? Fair enough, so that was a way of, of conveying the information of how big the lizard's toes were, depending on where the lizard was found. To add to that, they correlated the hurricane frequency, how often hurricanes happened in that area. And in order to do that, they took those dots and color-coded them. So if it was a blue dot, that meant that it had hurricanes not very often. And if it was a red dot, that meant they had hurricanes a lot. And if it was kind of a muddy purple, it was somewhere in between. And that told them that there was some correlation between there being a lot of hurricanes and a lot of dots. And that makes sense when you think about it, because if you have a number of, of lizards that are clinging for, to trees during a hurricane that have 155 mile an hour wind and the wind is ripping off some of them and flying some of them away and some of them die because of that. Well, the ones that have the larger toe pads are more likely to survive the hurricane and then pass their genes on to the next generation to keep that trait something in part of the population. It's one of the ways we look at how the environment affects a population's characteristics. One of the things I'm going to talk to you about today is questions you guys had, concerns about the class. So I already did a section on the questions about me. Uh, these are all from your student questionnaire. This time I'm going to do questions you had as far as concerns. And you guys have concerns about the class and you're going to have concerns all year. And I want you to reach out and let me know what those are. Uh, but I'm looking through the questionnaire. I'm enjoying getting to know you guys. If you haven't filled out the questionnaire, please go do that. That's really important to me. So question number one, are we going to have at least one year of school in school? I'm, I think you must be meaning like one year of middle school in school and the answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, I don't know when, hopefully soon. Do I really have to show my face? No, no, I really want you to show your face because when you show your face, I can see you, I have a relationship with you, I understand your puzzled look on your face when you're, you're working on something and I can read the room to see, okay, am I distracting the students? Are they working hard? Are they confused? It helps me to help you, but if you don't want to show your face, you don't have to. Maybe just turn it on while you're asking a question so I can see your face, but that's up to you, it's up to you. How are we going to do tests and make sure students don't cheat? That was one of the first things people asked when we moved to distance learning is like, how do you know if I'm going to do it honestly? I'll be honest, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust that you're going to be honest. I'm going to give you some tests, some uh, multiple choice assessments that you could be dishonest and you could look up the answers and I wouldn't know. But I'm also going to give you questions that are a little bit harder, like a written response where you have to put together the information and explain to me the importance of it in your own words. That's something that will be harder to cheat on and um, it'll also be more telling. It'll tell me more about what you actually understand and less about what you can look up. Do I speak Spanish? I don't speak Spanish. I know un poquito, just a little bit of the words, um, enough to recognize some words, but not enough to really speak it. I'm sorry. Lo siento. What do I do if I have a question during a lesson? That's a great question. Everybody needs to know how to ask questions during a lesson and different people have different situations in their household. Okay, number one, you can raise your hand. If I see your hand up, I'll call on you. Sometimes I'm working on something else, so I might not see your hand. So if it's a quiet moment, you can also unmute yourself and ask your question. You don't want to talk over somebody else or interrupt. You want to be polite. Just unmute yourself, ask your question, and mute yourself again. You can type it in chat. 
type the question in chat. This is one of the reasons why chat etiquette is really important that you guys aren't blowing up chat with emojis and gifts. I will unmute you if you are doing that because I want the chat to be available for people that are asking questions. And then finally, you can leave a comment in Google Classroom. If you leave a comment on the assignment in public view, one of the other students could help you with it. Uh, when I see it, I'll try and help you with it. You could also leave me a private comment, which I may not get to right away, but I can also respond to that. And usually I'm able to see it within a couple of minutes. Last question, will all of our work be in Google Classroom? Yes, everything that we do in class will be in Google Classroom. So if you miss some time, if you get logged out and you wanna know what did I miss, everything that we do is gonna be posted in Google Classroom. The difference is there is one section we're starting this week in TCI Online where some of the assignments you'll be turning in in TCI Online. Uh, but even then, the assignment itself will be posted in Google Classroom so you know where to find it. That's all I have for today. Learn more about anole lizards and hurricanes and how environment affects population with these links I've shared. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.